This is a video that we're going to talk about the chemistry of permanent waving, okay? So the first thing that we need to realize is when we're talking about, um, you know, using chemicals to alter the shape of hair, that is ultimately a chemical texture service, right? Because you're using chemicals and you're changing the texture of hair. So it kind of just speaks, it kind of just says exactly what it means. So it causes a chemical change that ultimately alters the natural wave pattern of the hair. So for instance, if somebody wants a perm, you're going from straight to curly. Um, if you're doing a relaxer, you're going curly to straight. And it allows you to offer clients a variety of styling options, which otherwise may not be available to them without chemicals. So let's talk about a perm wrap. So a perm wrap is essentially a wet set on perm tools instead of rollers, okay? In a wet set, we only break hydrogen bonds, right? Because we have to remember wet set hydrogen bonds can be broken with water. In a perm, we are breaking the disulfide bonds that are stronger and more resistant. So if we remember, disulfide bonds are the strongest of the three bonds within the hair. So applying a perm, a chemical, alters that, or it, the way that it alters the wave pattern is by breaking the disulfide bond. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what is actually happening when we do a uh, perm wave? So first thing is the alkaline, so if we remember alkaline means base, the base solution soften and swell the hair and open the cuticle, right? Because we, if we remember correctly, all of our side bonds are inside of the cuticle of the hair shaft. So this is kind of what's happening here. So if you'll notice here, <coughs> your cuticle is here. I'm sorry, yeah, so we're swelling this to open the cuticle to apply the chemical inside. Acid solutions result in far less swelling of the hair than the base solution. So that is why we use base solutions when we're doing a perm waving. So if you'll notice here, this is very swelled. So this is where our side bonds are. So we can break those bonds way easier when we apply a different chemical, where if you look here, they're not as swollen. So we don't have that much of an opportunity to break the side bonds. Okay, so let's talk about the perm waving reaction. So this is, if we're thinking about our protein-protein disulfide bond, this is a hydrogen bond. We'll notice that, or as a refresher, disulfide bonds join sulfur atoms. So sulfur atom, sulfur atom. Disulfide bond is broken. And then the sulfur atoms attach to hydrogen from a solution, and then the polypeptide chains then reform. So we're breaking apart the polypeptide chains. So then I have two sulfurs. So the sulfurs are together, then I break it. And then I'm attaching a hydrogen so then the, the, the polypeptide chains can go back together. What is a reducing agent? Okay, the reducing agents that we can use are thiglocolide acid, which causes reduction in perm solutions. So it reduces the perm solution in order for the reaction to happen. Ammonium thiglocolate, which is also referred to as ATG, is the main ingredient in an alkaline perm. So again, alkaline means base. Ammonia, or I'm sorry, ammonium is the base piece of this solution, okay? And then perm pH is a second factor in solution strength. So it's just strengthening the basicity or the alkalinity of the solution. So what are the different types of perm waves? Okay, so this is sort of illustrating where you can um, sort of work with different perm solutions. So there's different ones. You can have a low pH wave, you can have an alkaline cold wave, an exothermic wave. So the exothermic and the alkaline cold wave are opposite of each other. Okay, so this one um, releases 
energy or heat, and this one does not. Um, ammon ammonium free, which means that there's no base substance in there, wave. An acid balanced wave, true acid wave, and then a low pH wave. And these different waves are used on based off of your client's hair. Okay, so alkaline waves, which is your base waves, your cold waves, have a pH between 9 and 9.6. Acid waves, so glycerol monothioglycolate, is the main ingredient, which means it has a low pH, right? Because remember, um, acid is less than 7 on the pH scale. You have your true acid wave, which has a pH of 4.5 to 7.0, which requires heat to process, okay? And then you have an acid balance, which has a pH of 7.8 to 8.2, which are not true acid waves because we're not at an acid pH number. You have exothermic waves, which are chemical reaction heat solution and speeds the process of the waves. And then you have endothermic waves, which are activated by outside heat source. Okay, so this one you have to apply heat. This one actually you don't have to apply heat because there's enough, enough energy that's happening that the heat is actually released. And then you have ammonium-free waves, which means no base. The main ingredient does not evaporate as readily as the ammonia. So um, this process takes a little bit longer. You have thio-free waves, which the reducing agent is not ATG, the ammonium thioglycolate. It uses cystamine or mericaptamine instead. And then low pH waves use sulfates, sulfites, bisulfites. They're weak, do not uh, provide a firm curl, and they're marketed as body waves or alternative waves. So this would be like... Um, if somebody doesn't want the long, you know, lasting what perms do to the hair. Okay, so now that you know all of the perm types, right, let's talk about how you select them for your client. Um, now, this sort of looks intimidating, but I just want to reassure you, just like for me as a teacher, there's sometimes when I have to like, you know, check a reference or like, look to see what I actually have to do or what I need to you know, teach or whatever, what have you. So as a cosmetologist, you're going to have access to this information. It's not like you're going to have to pull it straight out of your head right away. Um, as you go on in your career, obviously this stuff you'll start to um, learn by heart. So please don't be intimidated by this. Um, so I'm going to actually work backwards here because this is where you're going to have to look to see how your client's hair is prior to the service, okay? So if you have a client that comes in that has coarse, thick, or resistant hair, um, the alkaline cold wave, which has the ammonium thioglycolate, is going to be the best service for that client. And you can keep going here. Um, same thing here. This one's room temperature, this one's exothermic, which means the client's head will get hot because the energy is being released during the chemical reaction. If you have a client that comes in, has extremely porous hair or very damaged hair, so like that would be mine, I have extremely porous and very damaged hair, it takes me forever to blow dry my hair because it's so porous, you would do a true acid wave on um, that client where you're actually going to have to input energy. So remember, endothermic means you have to put energy in in order for the chemical reaction to take place. And then you can go on here, porous or damaged, um, an acid balanced wave, porous to normal, ammonium free wave, um, et cetera, here. And just again, the low pH waves requires you to input energy, so heat. Processing. I know this is a long video, I'm sorry. So the amount of processing time should be determined by the strength of the solution, not necessarily how long the perm is processed. So most processing takes about five to 10 minutes. Additional time allows polypeptide chains to shift into new configuration. So the processing, the five to 10 minutes is the breaking of the bonds. And then after that, 
you're allowing the bonds to reform. Okay, overprocessed hair does not mean overly curly, okay? Overprocessed hair means you broke way too many disulfide bonds and the hair becomes way too weak to even hold a curl, okay? So when we're talking about a perm being overprocessed, we're talking about the curl can't hold. We're not talking about the curls are uncontrollable, right? Overprocessed hair has a weak curl or maybe completely straight because the disulfide bonds have been completely trashed and the hair at the scalp is stronger than the ends. So in my instance, I have my natural hair growing in my top, which would probably take a perm very well, where the, the bottom of my hair away from my scalp is completely trashed, so it probably wouldn't hurt, hold a perm well. Underprocessed hair is sort of the opposite, right? If you don't break enough disulfide bonds, the hair will be significantly softened and will not hold the desired curl. And hair at the scalp is not as curly as the ends. And that means that you have to process the perm more. If too few disulfide bonds are broken, um, I just said that. I don't know why I said it again. Sorry. So perm waving thio neutralization okay so you add the perm um, solution at the start the neutralization is what you use to stop the reaction to stop the processing so neutralization stops the action of waving solution and rebuilds the hair into its new curly form it performs two functions it deactivates the waving solution, which means it stops the waving solution from working, and then it rebuilds the disulfide bonds that have been broken. So stage one, how do you do a neutralization? So after you add the perming solution um, and it's processed, you rinse the hair for a full five minutes. Towel blot thoroughly but gently. If directed, apply um, a pre-neutralizing conditioner to strengthen the hair said that already sorry um, said that already I don't know why there's two of them sorry chemical hair relaxers so we've talked about perms now let's talk about relaxers so perm causes curl relaxers causes um, straightness so you're you're taking a curl and making it straight um, so this is sort of where we are on the pH scale so our hair naturally has a pH of five Seven is neutral. So thio relaxers and hydroxide relaxers. So hair relaxers are gonna be a base chemical reaction. So an alkaline chemical reaction. Um, so again, chemical hair relaxing is the process of rearranging the basic structure of extremely curly hair into a straighter or smoother form. So what's a thio relaxer? So the main ingredient, so you're probably like, why does a relaxer have the same ingredient? Um, because the ingredient can do the reverse, uh, that it can make hair curly. It can also make hair straight, okay? It usually has a pH above 10. Um, you're going to need a higher concentration of ATG, which is ammonium thioglycolate. You have a thicker viscosity, which means that your solution is not going to be as um, runny, I guess you could say as your perm solutions, and it breaks the disulfide bonds and softens the hair. The neutralization used with thiorelaxers is an oxidizing agent. So before we were talking about reducing agents, now we're talking about oxidizing agents, which is usually hydrogen peroxide. The oxidation reaction caused by the neutralization rebuilds the disulfide bonds that were broken with the relaxer. Hydroxide relaxers, you have sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, guanidine hydroxide. It's not compatible with thio relaxers and it has an extremely high pH, which means it's very basic and um, kind of dangerous to use. And it deals with lanthanization. Hydroxide neutralizations process does not involve oxidation or rebuilding disulfide bonds. Hair remains at a high pH, so if our hair starts at a five naturally, 
when you add a hydroxide neutralization, your hair is now going to have a pH that's higher than seven. So an acid balance shampoo or normalizing lotion is used to sort of bring that pH back down. Um, hair that has been treated with hydroxide relaxers is unfit for thio relaxers or soft curl perms. So what that means is if you have a client that had a perm using thio, I'm sorry, with um, thio relaxers or soft curl perms, you're not going to be able to, re to reverse it with a hydroxide neutralization. Okay, so summary and review. So I want you to think about these questions. What is the difference between an alkaline wave and a true acid wave? So a base wave versus an acid waves. Why do permanent waves need to be neutralized? How do thio relaxers straighten the hair? How do hydroxide relaxers straighten the hair? And what is curl reforming and what is it best used for? Awesome, thank you.